Jermaine from Shovel Nose Hogs I'm back with another video and in this video we're going to take more of a deep dive into crypto sporidium because this is something that I've dealt with and I'm sure other people would deal with and I just want to raise awareness so we can figure out ways and to not only prevent this from occurring in your collection but possibly treating it so I'm going to refer to this this research study that I found online that had a lot of information it's titled Gastric Cryptosporidosis in Snakes, a review. It was written by James Bogan, who is a, a veterinarian in Central Florida. And I feel like this overview of crypto in this study does a good job of covering all the aspects. So I kind of went through the study and highlighted a few things that I thought were important. So we'll just break that down and kind of go over um, that and we'll learn a little bit more about crypto. So let's get started. So first, Cryptosporidium, um, there's actually 38 known species of it, and there's 40 more that haven't even been named. But in terms of snakes and lizards, the main one that we look at is uh, Cryptosporidium serpentis, especially with snakes. That's the one that we're mainly going to be focused on. And there's two types of the serpentis. Um, one that primarily affects snakes and then you have type B that primarily affects lizards, but either or can occur in snakes and lizards. So I thought that was pretty interesting. As we scroll down in the study, um, the next thing that I thought was important to know is the, the mode of transmission of crypto. So the main transmission is through fecal to mouth. So if you have a snake in this enclosure, that has the disease and then you put another snake in that environment if it runs across any of the feces usually it's going to have crypto in it and then that other snake is going to get infected so the fecal to oral route or indirectly through feces or even vomit so if a snake regurgitates it can have some of those crypto spur spurs in there and it can if it if it is ingested by another snake, then that's how it can be spread. All right, scrolling down, um, we're gonna talk about the clinical manifestations. So I thought this little paragraph was interesting because you have subclinical and you have clinical manifestations. So the subclinical is also gonna be known as asymptomatic. So what I found interesting about this is some sub clinically infected snakes may clear the infection on their own. So you have some snakes that have crypto that can get rid of it on its own. And the scary part is you can have subclinically infected snakes that are carriers and are spreading the parasite without them even experiencing any side effects. And they can be carriers and spread this for over 20 years, probably for their whole lifespan, never have any symptoms but they're spreading it and you don't even know and then you have um, some that carry the crypto and then eventually it worsens to the clinical manifestation and so some of the manifestations of crypto when it's actually active and is um, destroying the insides you'll see um, narrowing of the gastric lumen um, gastric mucosal hypertrophy You'll see regurgitation, uh, leather, lethargy, anorexia, and progressive debilitation. And also you can see the stomach. The stomach will likely enlarge, and sometimes you can visually see that. Um, another thing that I found um, interesting was that it's difficult to say why some snakes develop clinical symptoms and some don't, but usually stress may play an important role. So it's been reported that snakes with environmental stressors are more likely to show clinical signs of the disease as well as progression. All right, scrolling down more. I skipped a lot on here, but the next thing that I found um, interesting was um, the testing. So the golden standard of testing is PCR testing or having a biopsy of the intestinal tract or the stomach because the the biopsy is probably not likely um, unless you go to a vet and do that the pcr test is going to be the next next best thing and so pcr testing on a gastric sample collected three days after eating appears to be the most sensitive usually you test 
um, either the fecal content or if the snake regurgitates, you can swab that regurgitated meal um, and have that tested. Um, and then what I found interesting is regardless of the test used, every test modality has a potential for a false positive. So, you know what I'm saying? Even if you get a positive test, it may not usually is that means that the snake have it, but that's not always the case. Um, and then treatments. So unfortunately to date, there has not been any treatment shown to be completely effective in treating crypto in any species. And so this article, it goes through a list of different medications that have been used. Um, you have one that has shown some promise it's called uh, paramomycin. And uh, this has been shown to basically decrease how many oocytes, I think that's how you pronounce it, that the, the crypto um, parasite releases or those spur, those spores that they release. Um, but over a long period of time, you have, you have to chronically give them this medication. But once they stop the medication, they seem to re, they seem to pretty much have a reoccurring infection. But I think more research needs to be used on that. Um, and you also have some non-traditional compounds. So I thought this was very interesting. So non-traditional compounds such as essential oils, selenium, and curcumin have shown promising, uh, promising treating mammals with cryptosporidosis. So Essential oils such as onions and cinnamon have shown to decrease oocytes. I think that's how you pronounce that. Counts in crypto parvum, which is the crypto that's found in mammals. So if you scroll down a little bit, there's a study that was conducted in 2018. And this study compared the efficiency of curcumin. Curcumin is actually um, part of the herb turmeric. It's basically responsible for all the health benefits of turmeric and it has been extracted. So they compared that to uh, paramomycin uh, antibiotic and immunocompromised mice affected with crypto. And the interesting part is all the mice that were treated with the paramomycin continued to shed um, oocytes, whereas oocytes could not be detected in mice treated with curcumin. So although these compounds may show promise in treating crypto in mammals, there still needs to be evaluated in snakes infected with crypto serpentis. Therefore, proper dosing can be recommended. So curcumin could potentially be um, a treatment. We just don't know yet. So I thought that was kind of promising and uh, kind of gives us hope. Cause it's just a lot of testing that needs to be done. A lot of studies that need to be done. And so kind of moving on to environmental disinfectants. So this is going to be probably the most important part of the video, how to properly disinfect um, your enclosures, your utensils that you use to feed your animals. And so basically the safest um, product that you can use is hydrogen peroxide. That's effective. So hydrogen peroxide is effective in inactivating cryptosporidium as long as the concentration is at least 6%. Concentrations of hydrogen peroxide less than 6% are below the necessary 99.5% inactivation for proper disinfection. Another way you can disinfect is with temperature. So temperature extremes can also be used to inactivate crypto. Temperatures above 133 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes will cause 100% inactivation of crypto. Addition additionally, crypto is more sensitive to moist heat than dry heat, which suggests steam cleaning may be a viable option to disinfecting a large area, provided the temperature of the area to be clean and be maintained above 133 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes. So this means sanitizing your utensils in a dishwasher set on high heat will actually be a very good way of combating any cryptosporidium that you may have.
And so this article actually does a good job. It has a table of the effectiveness of multiple disinfectant agents. And so I want to, I want y'all to look at this. So in terms of um, these different disinfectants, most of this stuff is not commercially available, but I want y'all to look at the hydrogen peroxide, uh, the percentages of that and the effectiveness. So first at the top, we have 7.5% hydrogen peroxide. So hydrogen peroxide is the H2O2. So this chart shows that 7.5% with a contact time of 20 minutes had an effect in, had was effective 99.9% of the time, over 99.9% of the time. So in, re, in reducing um, infectivity of crypto. Then you have uh, this same person, this is happened in 1999. They used 6% hydrogen peroxide, 20 minutes contact time. It also had greater than a 99.9% .9 efficiency. And if you go down a little bit, you have a different person studying 6% hydrogen peroxide with a contact time of four minutes, and that had a 99.9% effect, effectiveness. And then the same, the same researcher from the, the top two, they used 6% at 10 minutes, and it had a 99.8% effectiveness. And so then you go down to the minimum inactivation of 99.95% disinfectant. 99.5% is still pretty good. And so we have 3% hydrogen peroxide. This is the hydrogen peroxide that you find in stores such as Walmart that you put on cuts and stuff like that is 3%. So 3% at 20 minutes had a 99% effective rate at destroying crypto. You also have 3% tested at 10 minutes and that had a 98.4% effective rate. So even 3% hydrogen peroxide does a very good job of destroying crypto as long as it's able to sit on that surface for at least 10 minutes. Now I want to look at other common things that have been used as disinfectant. I can look at bleach. So you have this one researcher in 2010, they tested 6% bleach at a um, contact time of 120 minutes. And at 120 minutes with 6% bleach, it had a 92.7% effectiveness. And then, but if you go down to 6% bleach at 33 minutes, 0% effective. So bleach is not something that you should be using to get rid of crypto. Um, also, things that I've seen people use is um, ethanol. You also have carbon monoxide, um, formaldehyde. None of these things are effective in getting rid of crypto. So the best thing to do is use hydrogen peroxide. Um, at least 3%, but the best is at least 6%. All right, and then we have some pictures of the stomach. All right, and so this is what the author recommends to conclude um, this research study. So he recommends the best thing is quarantining, especially when you get a new animal. It's probably best practice to assume any new animal that you bring into your collection is crypto positive. So quarantine animals need to be need to have dedicated equipment that is not shared with unaffected snakes that are quarantined. Caretakers should use proper quarantine attire. If multiple snakes are in quarantine, then individual equipment, including exam gloves, should be made available for each snake. If this is not feasible, then proper disinfection is required between animals. The author prefer, prefer, prefers to change gloves between each enclosure and use 6% hydrogen peroxide for 20 minutes contact time on each item that needs to be disinfected. Uh, snakes that are diagnosed with gastric crypto and show clinical signs should be euthanized to prevent protracted course of starvation and emaciation because there is no effective treatment. So, like I said, it, it's, I found this article to, pre, to be pretty informative. It's a lot of things that I left off. Um, and it, I feel like it's a lot of things um, that needs to be studied 
further. And I think we can get through this because if the leopard gecko uh, community can get through cryptosporidium, I think the snake, uh, snake people can as well. And like I said, this article is kind of hard to find online for free. But if you have a hard time finding this article for free um, and you want to read this, all you have to do is just email me at shovelnosehog at gmail.com and I'll send you a copy of this article. Hopefully this was informative. Um, I'm pretty sure I mispronounced words. I'm not a microbiologist. But if you like the content, you like the video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see y'all. And subscribe, I'll see y'all for the next one.